Hello. <laughs> no, but Anne. Uh, hi. Is this is this um, DrupalCon? No. Oh, no. This I, is an alternate reality. I found myself in the wrong room. I apologize. <laughs> This, is, the wrong this is your psychologist. <laughs> We're in therapy today. It's a little bit of, not therapy, it's a, what is it? Group therapy? Yeah, we can say that. You know, we can, we, I, think we, I think we should roll this together with the coffee boff because we need a lot of excitable coffee lovers in this room right now because it's right across the way. Upstairs people? No. Someone invited crazy drunk kids to be our neighbors upstairs. <laughs> They're Oh, the queue? Remember I said, oh, there's that a big queue oh, up so there. Oh, so we were walking up over here, and we're walking the street, and he was like, oh, what's that queue up there? Like, what's there a queue up there for? And I'm looking down the street, looking for a long line of people. Because we have a British person, and we deal with British literally people. Literally the letter Q and in the window. Is it a queue? Is it a British people thing? No, a because a, like a queue is a line. And so she's like, Amy, are you just talking about a line? Where's the line? I, and I'm, I'm like, like, no, there's a big red left, letter Q. All over the place going, <laughs> I don't see people. What is it? It's like a, someone, well, my director said that it was a cue after the dude from Star Trek. And it was like that oh. mindset of like, let's talk about things that are just extra. Oh, oh, oh. Like, cr like on the crazy, well, not crazy, but fun like continuum. What's possible if you get outside of the every box? Thing. Yeah. Which in and of itself is maybe not terrible, but like it could be an interesting place to. But when it's definitely very loud and clappy. Yeah, but when. After this session, I'm going to go up there to see what that's all about, because that's hilarious. Okay, that's awesome. Because if we both go, we can't both be right, of course. Are you sure? I'm very uh, able to be persuaded, because that's what she's for. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good, because I'm so that's a very pessimistic we realist. Said, we said so, show yeah. up, and you did. Oh, that's awesome. I'm like, oh, I should, I should go? Tell me where to go. Uh, you should run to camp? Oh, okay, yes, I'll do that. <laughs> Just say yes. It's okay. Yeah. Everyone's like the year of yes. Like, just yeah. Yeah. Like, just lean in. Stuff. Don't worry. I'm going to take you guys on this one. I'm going to go for it. Okay. Okay. Um, you so. might be surprised at some answers. It'll, they might be entertaining. Um, I did not have coffee this morning on purpose because I don't drink coffee before I speak. Because then she speaks very fast. Very fast. Very fast. Brrr. No, sugar is not a good thing either. Have you been inside Dunkin' Donuts? I, I ha not this one, but I have been before. So I went in there, and they had a bucket, like a big green bucket that was like this big. And it was on, a on the side was written sugar, <laughs> and on the inside of it was a bunch of donuts. Probably eighty pounds worth of sugar. Oh my god! Just sitting next to. Oh, them. it's ready for the days. Yeah. Oh. Don't let me. Can you imagine that much sugar because it means being ready to be off the house as well? Yeah. Like, the way they even bought it was the packet. Because that's all the icing and the dough. Yeah, everything. Oh, yeah. I think everything was already, like, cooked there. I think it just were added to coffee. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. Because it was, like, where you would normally, like, it was, like, it was on the ground. So, like, the person working there could have gone to... <laughs> Sugared coffee. Yesterday I went to coffee with Adam and one of our team members and we went to Crema around the corner and and my partner has been on a, a decreasing co caffeine thing and so I had this coffee. I didn't even drink like a quarter of a small coffee and I was like, ah, and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry because we were having a meeting of the team. I'm like, I am listening to you. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm shaking. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. I'm very, actually, I'm laser focused, but way faster than anybody has time to speak. And it was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. If it was daytime, stuff was it probably had phone? some form of suit, uh, like. Apparently, you're not supposed to operate. Oh, well, it probably has uh, the stuff that used to be in Sudafed. I don't know. Like Sudafedrin? Ephedrin? Yeah. Yeah. That's the stuff that they make. They make with. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's also really helpful if you really feel crappy, though. Not mad. To be fair. <laughs> no, but like. Okay, so yes, let's make sure the transition comes back to pharmaceuticals <laughs> no, like, of uh, the legal type. Because you can still get the Sudafed D or whatever. Yeah, you have the to go decongestant. To the, you have to, but you have you're to limited to how much you can buy and all these different things. Yeah, but it does work if you're feeling really crappy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's all sorts of fun types of chemistry, food chemistry. Yeah. And it's funny because my, 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 my ex-husband's mother-in-law was a food chemist, a sugar chemist that worked at CNH Sugar in oh. Hawaii. So she's one of the people who led us all to believe that fat was the problem instead of sugar. No, she's one of the people who are like, no, whatever. But she, but it was wonderful because she also grew up in the Midwest and in a huge family and she did all the baking. And so she uses food chemistry and she doesn't follow any, like she follows recipes a bit and she makes the best baking, but she'll do it like, okay, the weather outside is humid. So I'm gonna increase the baking Are you guys going to the coffee buff, but you're just saying hi? Yeah, but it's amazing, you like to hear. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, bye. I, oh, are you staying? I'm staying, but I'll sit a little bit for the back there. Just want to know Oh, no, we're here. We've been warming up the chairs We're fighting for a with while. Adam on who's going to end up at the coffee bar versus yeah. here. You know. Yeah. So he tried to recruit us in the hallway. Oh, you know, hey. we, we should have offered for the coffee bar to join us, oh. but they were going to probably be pretty rambunctious. But we can be rambunctious together. Like, what do you want to do when you grow up? Drink lots of coffee. No, I don't like coffee. Incorrect. No. Yeah, it, it, no, it that's you know, helps. Makes us feel like the room's more full. We have the personnel. Good. You, you oh, you know what? We we were playing the game Usual Suspects last night, and everybody had like the. You can play Usual Suspects. Unusual Suspects. Unusual Suspects. It's sorry. Some, unusual. John has it. John John one has it. It's um. It's. It's, it's interesting. It's kind of based on stereotypes, which is questionable. Yeah, it's a questionable thing. But what was funny is, okay, how do you identify what personality you are? And you could have like a card and, and it asks personality traits based on just what the person looks like. Profiling, which yeah. is. But um, what's interesting about it, which is actually interesting, is let's say the person who's the person giving the clue says, no, they wouldn't have tattoos. Like you might have different opinions about who would, yeah, who like what kind of person would have a tattoo or not. Yeah, so it's really, it's actually pretty neat because we, we had a but lot of conversations. But it is still heavily based on some interesting stereotypes sometimes. But really. is it to show you that you're not entirely all just true about that? I don't know what the exact point of that is because you can take it where you're like, because it, it actually makes you think about how oh, yeah. you stereotype people and how you may or may not be right. And actually the conversation, because, yeah, and right. the conversation and I don't know, is like, the group the people the, who made it, like what, you know. Yeah, yeah, and the group of people, like if you're playing with the group, they have to vote. Like, do we all agree that these people have that same trait of like the clue? So it could either be like reinforcing some really negative things or bringing up some positive conversations. I don't I know. I think which it's a little bit of both. But um, it oh is. my gosh, we could have totally made it a drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just a game. It was. Just, I'm, I'm not sure. It was just like the time filler game. It was easy to learn. People it's can. Like, someone else was like, it's kind of like adult guess who. Yeah. We. It's still ten thirty five. I know. I know. I, know. I, I should time a moment. Ago. I was like, wow, people are kind of coming in here, and oh, we have plenty of time. Ten forty five. Isn't that our session? Is ten forty five? I thought it was ten fifteen. I hope oh. we're, you're not. Are we at 10? We're at 1045, right? Okay, yeah. it's just yeah. triple check. <laughs> I'm like, oh, are you guys all staring at us? Hi, hi there. Yes. Hi, hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah. We're all set up. It was nice because it was empty before, yeah. so we're like, oh, we have plenty of time and get comfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That with this versus the battle of what did we do last night? So, <laughs> I mean, it depends on how late people were out last night. How I know, seriously. Uh, but 10.45 is a really generous time. Yeah, it's not like 8 a.m. where yeah. everyone was out till 4 and they're not going yeah. to get 6. Yeah, that's the rolling in with like one eye. Like, uh, everybody else will probably be in the same Exactly. Hey, we went to bed kind of early. I know. I, we were responsible oh, human I beings. 
Oh, you've <laughs> caught up then. I don't, no, I was 245. Yeah, but we were, it was a mellow time. We were waiting for other people from our team to make sure they showed up to the hotel well. So, yeah. I, I was asleep. Right she now. was asleep. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Well, we have a buddy system thing at TripleCon for our team. It's just make sure you always have a buddy. And it doesn't have to be us. It can be someone else, but someone that and we that know. And that someone knows where you went if you, you know, ventured off. Yeah, if you're going to go on a discovery path, they're like, oh, I'm at Cheney's party. Okay, that's fine. Now you really need to check in like eight times. But like, <laughs> but, uh, but, oh, I'm at this place or that place. It's really nice. So. Oh, yeah, that's hilarious. Well, that's good. I should have some background music, but I won't. Yeah. I would just put on children's music, and that's Don't just do that. no. Only when it's witty and fitting. And theoretically, it is, but don't do that. No. <laughs> As your body grows bigger, your mind grows stronger. It's great to learn because knowledge is power. School of House, uh, from School of House Rock, I don't know, Lair Coasts. Horrible. Ever since I was little. You can't do it. <laughs> uh, one of my friends. If I see the lyrics, I could do it. One of her terrible lyrics. Often makes up her own. Which, you know, a lot of people have some oh, interesting like bits and pieces. But one was, you know the song, oh God. I can't, oh, what is it? Uh, I can't, what is it? What is it? Love and nobody like but you. I life. can't seem to. I'm, I have love a melody and nobody on but you. Mm -hmm. all my right. Life. So her version of it for years do, was do, do. nobody like you for all my life, and she always thought she's like it's so peppy, but it's so mean. And I'm like, I can't see my <laughs> me liking nobody. No, love like and nobody I, like you oh, for all my <laughs> life. And I'm like. <laughs> she, she just thought it was like a weirdly the passive sweet, aggressive song. The sweetest diss song ever. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, you no. and me, and me and you, you know, together. We, okay, that's actually a cute song for this. <laughs> but, but not right now. But I'm like, how does that make sense with the rest of the song? She's like, it didn't. I always wondered. That's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So she, she, she gets screwed. <laughs> I just start scatting to the rhythm that I can kind of remember. And it's like, do, 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 do. Oh, what's hilarious do, 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 is the songs yeah. that like everybody doesn't quite know and everyone knows parts of it because everyone's like singing along and then I've all and of a sudden like, like a dip in the, yeah. it either like cuts off or you suddenly notice I was just being like, somebody nah, else nah, pops nah, up nah, that nah. verse and <laughs> like the Bohemian Rhapsody. That one oh, is, I know all no, of them. No, I, yeah, but, but sometimes if you're in a, or some other rock ballad, like, no, there's a couple come people sail know away. The chorus, that's it. If it's really confusing. We're singing over here. Good morning. <gasps> yes! I want Sorry, that shirt. Sorry, I saw the shirt already, and I knew oh she, I was going to make a comment, and it says she like freaked out. Um, no, my, my... You can say they still have them at the booth. They were giving away free shirts, and they have them. Oh, I'll look. Okay, yeah, my, uh, my cousin is on our team, and she explained the internet, the ethernet p coming in to ports as the Pink Floyd... Prism, she just did this at Stanford. Pink Floyd Prism, the network comes in and the ports of the rainbow. And right, that's why I was all, <gasps> and she's not here it with us. It just made me think Dark Side of the Drupal, but also that. No, it was much more sweeter for Lindsay, so yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, five more minutes. <laughs> that's a good pause. No, no, don't keep saying. Sorry, you. Uh. But yeah, she's like, it's such a weird thing that they say that. Considering I'm like, I always have to like look up lyrics when I'm like, that's questionable sounding. Are they saying what I think they're saying? And then I'm like, oh, they are. Or, oh, that's what they mean. What is this song about? Like for reals. It's a catchy tune, but this story is weird. Well, it's like a lot of people didn't realize um, Cinematron Train Life was about Nash for a long time, even though it's literally in the lyrics. Because they oh, didn't yeah. hear, them, they didn't actually listen to it. Ten forty. 
Ten forty, good buddy. Huh? I know. Well, I was singing. But, but then she wanted to put on kids music. No, I was silly. <laughs> I was like, oh, kids music would be fitting for this. Um, I have a child. Oh, I don't, <laughs> he's been potty training a lot, and we have a but he was on the toilet with him reading, and I don't know if it's as appropriate. Oh, oh hey, Patrick Story. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, we're really going, okay. Hello, everybody. So what? Okay, I'll turn it off. <laughs> He's in a music class for little toddlers, and they just run around and play instruments. And this is how they open them. Uh, congratulate you in person on your baby. Never oh, a chance thank to. you. I know. Oh my yeah. gosh! I'll show you plenty of fi funny saw, videos saw and pictures. Last night, just as you're out oh my god. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we were tired last night. We're old. I, I was expecting only some in No, I mean, I originally was like, I'm doing it. Then I was like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I have mindfulness. Okay, like, well. Now we'll, we'll get. Only three more minutes need to be filled with your children's mm -hmm. music. Well, she'll be coming round the mountain. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, here. Okay, does everybody know this song as a child? Open and shut them. Open and shut them. Give a little I never knew that song as a child. Really? No. I'm learning as an adult. Pick them underneath your chin. Open wide your little mouth, but do not let them in. Oh! I've never heard that in my life until just now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But it's cute because you can like creep up your, like, the kid's leg and go, ah! And it's very funny. And they're like, yay! Okay, we have like a minute and a half. <laughs> I know, we're gonna. Do, 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 do. Okay, got it. Right on the phrase. <laughs> Would you like to stand up? Yeah. Okay. It's been a long night well, and a long minutes, morning. Right? Come on, I just did a dance and a kid song. Do it again. Dance, dance, monkey, dance. Open and shut them. Open and shut them. Give a little clap. Open and shut them. Open and shut them. Fold them in your lap. Creep them, crawl them. Creep them, crawl them. Underneath your chin. Open wide your little mouth, but do not let them in. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what does Amy want to be when she grows up? Um, okay, you got a minute. Yeah. Do 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 you have a plethora of siblings. Is that a song that you guys have used before? Really? Oh. <laughs> no, it was like a new one that we had heard at the music class. I'm like, where have I been? Okay, <laughs> it is time. It is time. Good morning, everybody. Do you guys know what you want to do when you grow up? Oh, good, Daryl's here. Hi, Daryl. <laughs> you want to take a nap. That's what Genevieve said a couple of minutes ago about what does she want to do when she grows nap up. Nap time is later. <laughs> nap time is not now. <laughs> Give yourself about an hour. OK. Um, we're going to get started. My name is Amy Degnan. I'm CEO and principal architect at Hook 42. I'm Genevieve. I do all the non-technical things and operations and HR stuff. So. She takes care of us. Thank you, Genevieve. <laughs> I appreciate that. So topics we're going to cover today are why do we ask this question, how we kind of navigate through that 
answering this question and then a couple takeaways and some things to think about when you head home. Yeah. Oh, I'm losing my voice. Oh, yeah. It's There's fine. a bottle I'm of good. water. Okay. Why do we ask? So, who has been asked this question before? Okay, and that, a few people, half the room. Who hates this question? Okay, so it's almost the same people that those hands have raised. Um, we're the hope. We hope to replace the hate with some like, like softer, feelings. softer feelings about that. Um, but my story about this question and why I, I ask it because it's funny. That's where the session came from. Comes from is my dad always asks, "What do you want to do when you grow up?" And as we are children and evolve through our life, that question can be many different things and elicit a lot of different feelings. Like, I want to be an astronaut, or oh, what. I want to go to you know med school and I have to do all these things and so it really guides what you're doing and then my dad's retired I'm like what do you want to do with you grow up he's like I'm not growing up you know like <laughs> I'm gonna do like work in my garden so it's it's really different so so yeah touching on the idea you're already grown up no you're not I answer that again on the next slide as well just to really hit this point home none of us are grown up despite what our IDs say not true. Uh -huh. um, we also do it, like Amy kind of touched on, it lightens the mood. But the bigger thing is it increases your, increases your creative thinking and self-awareness because you're like, well, what do I want to do? Am I doing what I'd like to do? It can cause existential dread, but there's some tools to help you kind of get through that instead. Um, yeah, and it encourages you to really participate in your own life and the creation of what you're doing because if... Don't. Yeah. Okay. It, it can, encourages you to participate in your own life, and she wants to talk about this last Daryl, can you do the quote at the bottom? <laughs> it's never too late to have a happy childhood. <laughs> this is one of Daryl's favorite quotes. <laughs> yeah, so when we ask him that, that is what he says. So. <laughs> and then the question obviously brings up a lot of what ifs for a lot of people. What if you just don't know? It's okay, because it's just actually about growing. You, don't, you can answer this question and a little while down the road go, oh, I was wrong, that's fine. What if you change your mind? Again, it's okay, because we have ways to address that. Next thing, what if I'm already grown up? Like I already said, you're not. You don't have to worry about that. What if you're, this, we added this in, what if you're your own boss? Because we talk a lot about like, managers, you can do this. Employees, you might try this. What if you're working for yourself? It's okay, you can use all these tools as well. You won't have some of the same feedback, but you can use some of the steps as well to think about what you're doing with your own career. And what if you realize you're in the wrong job? That's fine, because you can create a new path. Sometimes that means a wild shift. Sometimes it's like, take a small step sideways and you can start going in a new direction and have a lot more success there. Yeah. And why does the business care about this? Well, it really increases employee engagement. Like, we both care about each other and the good for what they're doing. Um, and we cut, when this is coupled with frequent check-ins, there's greater, greater accountability on both parts. Like, um, is the business providing the tools that the, the individual needs to grow? But also there's nimble course correction. You're like, I'm really gonna do this one path. I wanna be a site builder. And you're like, oh, that's not working, but I really wanna maybe do something else. We can make sure that those course, courses are changed. Um, also, we can align growth with the company goals, right? So it's a really beneficial um, involvement for both teams and also we can keep a pulse on the overall health of, of each other right um, and make sure hey how are you doing and how, how is that going um, <laughs> it also increases the team coherence and um, and it's way easier for team planning because we know this project's coming up and it's aligned to a couple of other people's growth path let's give them that opportunity let's give them that opportunity to apply some of the things that they've been learning in a really tactical situation. <coughs> oh, yeah. We can, um, either one. So the next thing is we start, want to talk about is like the difference between a motivation and an incentive, which we go into a little bit later, but internal motivators are always going to work longer term than an incentive. If you want to do something because you want to do it, you are accountable to yourself, you are accountable to everyone involved. And a carrot dangling there saying, if you do this, you get this, jump through all the hoops, eventually doesn't work because you either need a really big prize or they just go, eh, I don't want it anymore. Yeah, and over time that just and evolves. The, the <laughs> thing here is money is only a motivator for so long. I'm not anti-money. Money is how we survive in this world. But at a certain point, having a billion dollars in a job that crushes your soul, in my opinion, isn't worth it. If you value something different, fine. 
but you know, usually soul crushing jobs, even for the money, I mean, don't has, work out that well. Has anybody gotten to that point where you're like, this job isn't worth the money, I just need to leave? Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Seriously, like we all have felt like that's why we have our own company. So like, um, anyway, um, and this comes back down to why does motivation matter? Um, what is my purpose? Why am I even here? It gives that greater um, sense of community and contribution, not just to yourself, but to the greater good of the business or for Drupal, the greater good of the community. Um, and we talked a bit about marrying goals and that type of thing. But really what happens is when we ask these questions that are not like a yes, no question, but they're open-ended, it provides the, that there's no wrong answer. It's the creative answering that really it's exploration of where you want to go. Um, and we talked about the internal motivators. For the how am I doing, being able to answer that question really eliminates the guesswork and unknowns. So you're are like, am I doing okay? Do they think I'm doing okay? Am I doing this right? Is this okay? Because eventually that's going to eat away at you, and even if you're doing it right, that leads to, it can lead to like an imposter syndrome or other things there. It can also be useful because sometimes people, whether it's down a rabbit hole or just have some idea and they go way over here, constant feedback keeps you from getting way over here. You might be like, over here. And you can be like, oh, let's come back a little bit. Yeah, so, that's, and, and it's, uh, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting, right. but, um, I, I, I was talking about this other, another day, uh, the other day, and it was like the unknowns and guessing cause persistent mental chatter. And it tends to get in the way of keeping on that track. Right. And that this helps kind of align that and calm the chatter. And then, yeah, the third thing we have is those feed, that feedback and constant idea of like knowing how you're doing instead of guessing and worrying about it allows you know, greater self-confidence because you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. Someone gives you feedback or you can start applying it yourself and go, okay, I've got this. Cool, I've got this. Self-accountability goes back to the same idea of the things that internally motivate you to succeed. You can go, I want to do this for me and I know that I'm doing it well. And then the self-awareness, which comes into sometimes you're doing things a lot better than you think you are. On right. the flip side, occasionally you think you've really got it it's and like, you do need a little bit of a reality check, which no one really likes, but long term that's much more helpful because you have a better awareness of what is really going on. Right. Um, the biggest thing there is open communication really needs to happen between both parties because otherwise none of this works. Yeah, it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> or if you're doing this for yourself, you have to be honest with yourself because sometimes you're like, yeah, sure, I want to do this, even when no one's actually checking in on you on that. So yeah. it can be a little harder, but it's doable. It is doable. Just have to wear different hats for yourself. <laughs> um, and where am I going? It's really a discussion for continual growth. Um, when, so when we ask this question, sometimes they're like, I want to be a poet. I want to be happy. I want to have work-life balance. I want to have these things. It's not necessarily tied to, I want to be a developer. I want to make a module. Some, that, that does it kind is. Of, it sometimes sometimes very much it is like that. But like sometimes it gives a, a broader sense of where is the human coming from um, and how to align that. And that provides guiding principles of how the personal growth is going to happen. Um, and so this helps create the roadmap for next steps. Because sometimes a really, really big goal seems an, um, impossible. Right, like I'm gonna climb that. I can't. I don't think You're I can ever. You're gonna climb Mount Everest. Of, I was just gonna say. Oh, jinx. Um, <laughs> Mount Everest. And um, you're like, wow, that's a really tall thing, and that, that people die up there. But you know what? You can say, okay, I don't even go for a hike. Um, so I'm gonna. The first goal I'm gonna do is go for a walk or a hike, and then you chip that up and up, and maybe you get to Everest. Maybe you don't, but man, you got really good in shape on the way up there, and you had that goal to get. Um, and really, this ensures that everybody's on the same page, so we can respect each other's um, goals. If and you're trying to climb them. Everest and we're training you to be a NASCAR driver, it's not going to work, and yeah. everyone's going to be unhappy with what's going on. So yeah, go ahead. Um, so this is a big thing. Um, well, like if you have a job, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to climb the ladder. I'm going to climb the ladder. Climb the ladder. We're going to take over the, the world. Boss. Oh my gosh, take over the world. And some people are okay with this. Some people want this, but not all employees want this. Some people want to just be a developer or a marketer. A good developer. Right. Stay there. Yeah, and they're like, I like this. 
I don't want to do something beyond that, and that's okay. It's encouraged if that's what they want to do, but you encourage growth within that space. I want to be better at what I do. I need to keep up to speed with the technology. I want to, I want to reach out for tangential technologies. Oh yeah, let's integrate this. I want to learn something that connects with it. And that, that's super okay. Yeah. And actually, sometimes if we don't identify that early, there's a lot of conflict because the expectations of one person and the, and the wants and desires, and maybe the person's really good at doing something, but they hate it. That doesn't work. It causes all sorts of um, static. So ugh. anyway, go ahead. So then this touches back on what I started to say earlier, the difference between a motivator and an incentive. This is pretty simplified, but motivations have a much greater personal connection or emotional connection, which is what usually drives you to have a personal feeling of you know, accomplishment, satisfaction, all those things. They're usually an intangible thing, whereas incentives are, I'm going to give you a bonus if you do this. I'm going to do this if you do that. Or I'm going to take that away from you if you don't do it. And so those usually promote a quicker change, but not a lasting change. And so it can be... They are useful. I'm not saying incentives are always bad. They're useful for things sometimes, but they can be detrimental if they're the only thing you're ever using to try to figure any of this out. They shan't be a crutch, right? Well, the it's same just, goes, yeah. though. Motivator, motivators only work so long as well because personal satisfaction in a job is great, but, but the flip of live. earlier where you have a billion dollars <laughs> and it's soul-crushing, you can feel really good about what you're doing and no one's giving you any recognition or pay and we live in a world where money gets us you know, food and shelter, it's not gonna work either. Yeah. So it's a balancing act. Without any incentives, like I said, internal motiv motivation will run out or people will feel really underappreciated. So recognition becomes really important and that's often in the form of some sort of incentive. Sometimes it's not. They don't know they're gonna get something because they did it. It's just a nice reward at the end. They're like, hey, you did that thing, you took initiative, cool, here you go. Right, and in the Drupal project you can see um, uh, over time, there was a vast movement to add proper attribution to commit credits and large issue queues because people were doing a lot of work and lacking the recognition. And then they were using those points to compare like your cred across the board. But you're like, wait a second, I did all this work and I don't have my recognition there, the lasting recognition. So um, it, it, this permeates beyond just um, your work environment or your personal goals, you can see it within the community engagement. And then the recognition is important. This comes back to the open communication. For some people, saying thank you, they're like, thank you, I just wanted to say, someone to say that. Other people are like, where's the money? So, or it can really vary what it is they'd like. So again, talking about that is really helpful. Yeah, sometimes they just want a hug. <laughs> um. So then, yeah, dispirited, unmotivated, underappreciated, Unappreciated workers cannot compete in a highly competitive world. No. They, they can't. And what happens is being unmotivated ends up being bad for everybody. So because as an employee, I'm going to read the employee once. She'll read management. Sometimes you become a passenger in your own career and you're like, I don't care what I'm doing, so I'm just going to go along. Someone else is driving your career and you never really feel like you're getting anywhere or increasing your, yeah, your satisfaction with your job, turning into whatever you wanted to be when you grew up. Or you might be on the wrong bus altogether if we're sticking with our bus analogy, yeah. same thing. You're like, I'm gonna be a NASCAR driver, I guess I'll get on this bus. Oh wait, you actually wanted to go to Everest? Too bad you're on this bus now and you're just sitting there because... You're going to Indianapolis. And so usually if you feel like you're at a dead end rut, you're gonna perform like you're in a dead end rut. And so depending on who you're working with and where, that often will end up meaning that n no one's gonna grow, no one's gonna help you change because they're like, eh, performance issues. And therefore, uh, yeah, it's so I'm getting into management too much. And then no. also, if, if you're not motivated to grow, no one can make you do it. Period. You, end of story. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't get them to drink is the cliche. Is the and you know, phrase, it's not that you have to always be like, I'm going to do it and go and not have any days where you're like, Ugh, or discouraged. But yeah. ultimately, if yeah. you never have any motivation, it might mean that you need to look somewhere else for something. Yeah. But. And on the management level, if your employees, employees aren't there and engaged and competitive, neither is your company because that's who your employees are. It's the company, it's the team. And it doesn't mean you should create like a cutthroat company or anything. This is just, it's motivation to improve oneself um, in, in the goal of a greater good. 
uh, just like we do with the Drupal community. Um, and then you also remember you're a team together. You're not competing against each other. It's very important to foster that because if you have that battle, everybody's going to try to not only he not help the person rise next to them, but they're going to like try to squash them. That's not cool. Like, and then they're squashing each other and then they're paying all this attention about like keeping the other person down instead of raising each other up and themselves up. So not very healthy. And yeah. you, you'll, you'll hear this theme again, communication, communication, communication. Yeah. Um, but it really does, it, it can help because it can define opportunities that someone might not know is there, either because coming from the company, you might go, oh, we need someone to do, do this. They're like, oh, I'd love to do that. I mean, or it can just eliminate the dislike doctrines. If you have no idea what you want to do, you're like, okay, well, let's make a list of what you know you don't want to do. And that goes both ways. It can empower people to ask for help or space when they need it. If you have a really closed door and no one feels comfortable talking, you'll never know if someone needs help. Or people won't feel comfortable asking for help because they're like, oh, I'm gonna, something, there will be a negative consequence to me having any sort of vulnerability. I should have chosen a different word. I hate that word. I love that word. I hate saying it. <laughs> um, it can also really help with maintaining where you're going. It can remind you where you're going if you're like, ah, I feel so lost. Yeah. Or it can reframe your perspective. Same thing. If you feel lost, someone can be like, no, look, you're kind of on the path. Or if you're like, oh my God, someone can help look at the situation from outside, mm -hmm. which doesn't always have all the details on what's going on inside the, in the situation, but an outside perspective can often be very helpful. Yeah. And to touch on the last Oops. point, Sorry. finding those proper motivators again, like you want someone to say thank you? Okay, great. Now we know that. Um, right. So the pessimist complains about the wind, the optimist expects it to change, but the realist adjusts the sails. So adjusting the sails, so it's like changing things as, uh, changing what's going on as, you're, as the world around you changes. So it's very agile. It's very agile in a boat metaphor. Um, it provides greater accountability for both parties like we talked about earlier, easier course correction. Um, but we need to have measurable goals um, to make sure, how do I correct what's right? Or what's, what's improvement and what's not improvement? Um, and this aligns again with the clear company goals. So if your company doesn't have goals or a strategy, it's very hard to anchor into that. So at the company level, you have to address that. Um, many big companies, schools, that type of thing will have goals and values set up. So this is where we align those things to. And really, um, a lot of increased one-on-one face-to-face -on -one communication is necessary. And if you're in a distributed team, don't just use Zoom audio or Slack. Like, put the video on. It doesn't matter if you are in your sweats or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just say hello, talk to them, because then you can see, like, you're discussing <coughs> with somebody in person, how are they feeling? by how they're looking and how they react and that type of thing. So it's much it's a higher value of communication. Um, and also, we're going to talk about our check-in process that we're using. Um, but these aren't your old performance reviews. So who has come from a, a company that makes you do a yearly performance review? And it's long, and it's a tro like a, yeah, it's a tome, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I have to prove to the management that I did something, but why don't they know that already? Um, and then it's like I have come from these and they're like super like we had to sell to not not our direct managers But the three le management level chains up that I've like yeah, I did this and but oh, But they never see their three levels up. What's going on? It's so a constant interview. Yay. Yeah, Everyone seriously loves interviews, right? a constant interview. That's great. That's fun um, but what we are using is um, check-ins that are semi-formal open discussion. It's a it's a work meeting but really align to the professional goals and give feedback to what's going on. And um, we do set, and we, oh yeah, I just said all that. But make, sh make sure it's just all about human check-ins and stuff. But what they are not is historically scary performance reviews. Of doom. Of doom. <laughs> of doom. Um, can I tell my management book yeah, story? Yeah, sure. Okay. So um, one company that's big and, and shiny what, what was highly competitive in, in the performance review writing, and I watched how much they made us work on it and take away from the other things and, and have us focus on how it was written. And I was like, I'm a good author, actually. This is like, why are you making me do all this stuff? And so I, was, I bought a book 
of management phrases used in performance reviews. And I walked around to everybody else in our team and we, we chose a few phrases and we planted it in each one of our reviews, the exact phrase, just to see if somebody noticed the pattern. No, nobody noticed the pattern. It was funny as hell. But I don't want that environment in my company. Well, I think it's funny. If somebody did that and we found it, I'd be like, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. But, oh, something is wrong on our company level to get that to that point. Um, so um, they aren't like a, a casual chat. This is a work discussion. Um, and we have things to have outcomes, right? And they're not behemoth pl plans set in stone either. So we have to be agile, right? So. Cool. So yeah, one of the biggest things about setting all this up and then we're getting more into the structure of all of this. If you work for yourself, you can still follow all these rules and it should work. Uh, obviously, two people aren't going to come to your meeting, though. Um, maintaining a regular, regular, a regular schedule. <laughs> a regular schedule is important because it really makes it, it allows time for preparation and it indicates that this is an important thing to both of the parties. Like, they are going to show up and the other person will show up and you guys, it's a mutual respect issue. That said, Sometimes things do come up and it's impossible. But as much as possible, be like, hey, I have a weekly standing time for you. This is my time for you. And it goes for people on both sides. They're like, I'm going to show up for this meeting and we'll be here to talk about this. And it's really open on both sides. Yeah, um, I feel really horrible too. Like for my direct report, sometimes I'm pulled off and things at the last minute because I'm on, you know, for whatever's happening. But the first thing they say is, I'm incredibly sorry, let's just make sure we give you proper time, when is the soonest time we can talk, and that type of thing. And it's, It sucks sometimes to do that. And then, kind of somewhat obvious, but coming prepared for these meetings is really key. If you show up and you're like, uh-oh, what? I don't know what we were supposed to do or what we're talking about, it can make the meeting harder. I, there's not much more to say about that, but showing up prepared is really important. And also creating rules of engagement and feedback guidelines really, really, really help these meetings out because everyone knows what's expected. Everyone knows what, how this basic structure is going to work, but what's expected and where we're going to go from here. And it allows time for everyone to talk because if you set up rules that say, we're going to do this, it's a, it doesn't have to say this long, like a really specific agenda, but having a thing like, we're going to ask this, you answer here and just... Yeah, it gives, Active listening, which we talk about later. Um. It gives, I know, and <laughs> welcome to us being all excited um, and be like, ah. Um, but it gives, it gives everybody a chance to say what they need to say and everybody listening. So um, also it gives a chance to revisit often, um, make sure everything's on track, allow for change like we talked about, and their guidelines, not fast rules. There are expectations set and deliverables or outcomes that we're agreeing on but the guideline is, okay, we're gonna do this together, let's just see how this goes and make sure we can change along the way. And then also what we do is make sure that the, 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 the management and the employee has shared access to all the documents that we do to create these plans because we use those for preparation and review um, and notes to be taken along the way. Um, it's really important to choose wisely <laughs> as we do this thing. We're gonna cover SMART goals. Who's heard of that term, SMART? Okay, yeah. Um, also keep the big picture in mind. And we have many small specific goals because they're easier to act than one large goal. Um, and once again, it isn't all doom and gloom because um, a lot of people come into these check-ins of fear. I'm in trouble. I'm in a meeting with the management. What did I do wrong? What are they gonna say? That type of thing. But Having a regular meeting also helps with that because you know it's on your schedule. It's not like, hey, I need to talk to you right now. No one likes hearing that. I mean, it happens. Oh my gosh. And sometimes yeah. you do just need to talk to someone and it's not scary, but sometimes you're like, we need to talk because it is scary. So having a regular place to take care of this can help. And from the management side, uh, when I say, hey, I need to talk to you, I'm trying to, about, I'll, I'll try to add context. Oh, about the session next week or about the this, because I don't want to say, I need to talk to you. Cut it. Whoa, that's not cool for anybody to hear. They're like, oh, whoa. But so yeah, it's <laughs> back on this topic though, it's really another place to recognize what's going well. It's not just like, hey, here's where you can improve. That's really important, that's how you grow. Sometimes that feedback is terrible to get and you're like, oh. But as much as possible, the things that are going well, make sure they're called out because sometimes if people feel like all they're getting is the things they need to improve, and it, which, which yeah. happens. And we'll talk later about sometimes people fail with this. But um, calling out what's going well is really important. And I'm gonna just say sometimes management decisions do not align with what you want. 
sorry, I, I have to be the boss lady and say that, but um, because business changes and business, you have to react to business. And as long as there's that open mutual respect that we're gonna talk about this and understand why things are happening and realignment may happen, that's okay. You should expect that because business is, does change. One so. other point on that, and it says, there may, must be some realignment with expectations. I'm not encouraging everyone to quit their jobs, but sometimes you realize you don't wanna be where you are, and that's fine. Other times you realize, I don't wanna do what I'm doing at this place, and there is a way to shift that role yeah. if the management's open to it. But you know, there's a lot of options Or here. if there's the opportunity there, that type of Or if of you're thing. working by yourself, while well, your manager and yourself really need to probably get together. Yeah, <laughs> and it's Have really- Have a, a deep conversation and Make sure you schedule yourself <laughs> Your, your self-care meetings, seriously, if you are an independent and you want to apply these, it works great, but you need to set that time apart for yourself. Um, and it's not always easy. So, humans, on being human. We're humans on both sides of this equation. Empathy is really important. Honestly, I feel like cultivating a culture of empathy is incredibly vital yeah. for all of this to work. The great things about humans, we can adjust our behavior and reply feedback. We have the mind to do it. We can also usually see perspectives from outside of our own. We can be really good at empathy. Emotional corrections to a work and career are huge motivators for a lot of people. Yeah, and so most cool. likely as a human, we get what the other person's saying. This kind of ties back to empathy. Sometimes the business says we have to do something else and it sucks. And it, or, or it's good because maybe there's some weird, yeah. crazy, neat, strategic direction we're going. But um, as long as everybody's understanding what's going on, that's great. On the flip side of this, we're only <laughs> human after all. Uh, humans get things wrong. We mess up, all of us do. I think someone's giving a talk today, later, about all the things that they did wrong in managing other humans. Yeah. Um, everyone will have a bad or an off day. We, we do things wrong, but we also sometimes might need more than one chance to fix something. Yeah. Again, if it gets into like 30 chances, you might need to look at that. Either you don't want to be doing what you're doing or you need to take that away from someone and be like, hey, can we work on this a different way? Yeah. Humans can be really, really bad at empathy. Yeah, if you're not You can just aware. be tapped out and just, you can't be there. It's hard. And sometimes if you're, human emotions can cloud judgment in any direction, so. Yeah. We're fallible creatures and with I, complex brains. Yeah, <laughs> and, from, and from the management point of view, it's very important to be open with the employees and other people that you're working with. If you have had a bad day, you come into that review and they might be like on cloud nine and you're like, um, you know, something bad has happened either at work or personally or something. And it's important to bring that to the, both parties bring it to the table. I'm having a bad day, um, or like something else is going on, let's be gentle on each other, right? It's that moment of like recognizing who, where you are now, letting others know, being in a trusting place, but you, we have to allow that trusting place to happen because if it's gonna be in a, an attacking place, it's a point of vulnerability. <coughs> oh, I did that word too. Um, uh, and if somebody has, is fearful, that they need to be in a protective, defensive state, it's not gonna work. So it really needs to have mutual trust both ways. Um, and it's better to participate and fail than fail to participate. Oh yes, so, okay. So the next, the next quote, there's an asterisk because we have some discussion about one of these lines, but. So do more than belong, participate. Do more than care, help. Do more than believe, practice. Do more than be fair, be kind. Do more than forgive, forget. Keep reading, we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Do more <laughs> than dream, work. So the reason there's an asterisk there is we got into a discussion after I found this quote about forgetting. And I don't like this line very much the way it's written because as management, you cannot forget what people have done. And I, I mean, that, that is correct. I'll let her finish. <laughs> Active listening. M my, Active my listening. I'm not is... finished. I'm not finished. Anyway, this is what it's like at work. It's awesome. I love it. But we also are um, very excitable and we're like, ah, it's hilarious. But basically this, do more than forgive, forget. It's important to forgive the team members. There are some unforgivables. Don't get me wrong. Like if you're breaking the durable code of conduct or if you're doing something that's illegal and stuff, don't know, that's, that's unforgivable. But if something is like not perfectly right, forgive them. Business has to actually like 
keep track of that stuff. And we need to see what repeatable behavior is, right? Because there's a moment where you have to take action. But what this is meaning, well, as we discuss what, this... Yes, was my point on this is, it's the whole forgive and forget. Yeah, you probably shouldn't forget because, you know, then you have someone who repeatedly does the same thing and it's a problem. But don't guilt trip people over it. Don't hang it over the head and be like, this thing, this thing, this thing. Did you have a question? Did you replace that word with learn? Don't forget. You won't forget learn? I think that as is a really good point. Yeah, absolutely. So the question was, can we replace that word with learn? So instead of forgetting, learn. So yeah. Right. And that also implies growth on both sides, so I really actually like that. I like that a lot, yeah. Um, so this, we just talked about some active listening. I will listen to you actively. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the, this really aptly titled slide, do this, so do these things. Um, active listening can be not the most natural <laughs> skill for some people. Some people really like to interject and interrupt. I totally think And keep that's talking, awesome. and sometimes and, oh you talk God. over other people because <laughs> you just don't want to hear what they're saying either, and, 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 which and. isn't great. <laughs> so the really big thing is don't just wait for your turn to speak. I know it's really hard. I mean, other people don't find this. It can be really hard because someone will say something like, ah, I have a response to that. Sometimes taking a quick note is good, but don't just wait for your turn to speak. Listen to what you're, they're saying. Sometimes it's nice to repeat back what you think is being communicated. But on the flip side, wait for your turn to speak. So if it's not your turn to speak, don't sit there checked out because you have something to say and you're ready to say it. Keep listening to what they're saying to you. And be very cognizant if caffeine affects your ability to do this, which it does heavily <laughs> with me. And so there's this moment yesterday we were having a, a discussion. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm under caffeine. So anyway, this, it's, it happened. Um, but yeah. I mean, there's entire books and talks on active listening. You can look it up if you have more questions. <laughs> but being forthright and proactive in your communication was the other thing. If you have an idea, bring it up. You know, when it's your turn to speak, but bring it up. And then if you're leading the meeting and you notice a couple people dominating it, try to make sure you don't call people out, but give them space to contribute. Yeah. Because some people don't want it. Yeah, and we used to have actually, and this applies to other work meetings, we um, have some people that take sometimes a very long time with a very long pause and it gets really frustrating waiting for them to talk, especially if you know where they're going. But you have to let and them And they're talk. not ready yet. <laughs> so we've had to put structure, but they get very, they should have a time to talk because that's who they are. But we put a structure in that gives round table, like, do you have something to say? Do you have something to say? And also slows people down a little bit and makes sure the clear agenda is clear. And it's been working pretty well because... Um, and also some people might be tired and they may be slower or maybe they take some time to internalize and ha formulate some type of response. So obviously, so. Yeah. But anyway, go ahead. More things to do. This is a lot about if you're doing this meeting in your workplace and how to kind of come to it the most prepared. Again, if you're working by yourself, well, you might not do all these unless you really want to have a conversation with yourself. But being engaged. Invest in your own growth, and this actually works for anybody. If you're talking to other people or not, take a moment to invest in yourself and figuring out what you want to do. And if you're at a company, that really might mean like showing up, figuring out what you want to do, and it might mean that you want to leave. It might mean that you want to stay there and participate in what they're asking you to do. There's a lot to go through there. Um, and do your best, which might not be perfect. You might try really hard to do it, and it didn't work. Something went wrong, communication failed, you just literally didn't do the thing, whatever it is. If you honestly tried, that's really important, more so than being perfect. Sometimes it's not what you hoped it would be, but show up anyway, even if you're like, I messed that up and I'm gonna come tell you I messed it up. It's important. Yeah, so. not coming to the table is one of the most, on the management side, I think one of the most offensive disrespects of time. Ooh, I said the big bad words. I'm sorry, guys. But because the management, at, like the rest of the team is showing up. But when somebody drops the ball, it's not even dropping the ball. If they're just not showing up and it's for their own growth, it's very hard to come to terms with that because it's like, wait a second, we're doing this not just for us, but for you. And we're helping and support you because that's the company culture that we make and we believe in, but it's, it's different. It's, it's sometimes challenging, but. And then again, 
coming prepared. Everyone yeah. needs to do their things. Writing notes ahead of time can be great if you're somebody who forgets, like something happens and you forget about it somewhere along the way before you get a chance to talk to someone. Write down some notes. Review if there's any documents around this, you know, that management has set up or if you're doing this personally, notes you've taken. Review it again. Go, oh, I'm, it's time for me to look at this again. What did I say last time? What was I supposed to do? And give yourself enough time that if it is with a meeting with someone else, that you have time to complete what may have been tasks were assigned, that were assigned to you. Yeah, or that you get assigned so to if yourself. You check in, so if you check it two minutes before your meeting and you were supposed to write like a couple pages about something, Probably. you might have a problem. Yeah, and also as we go through this introspection, it might come at like times where you're going for a walk or you're in cooking dinner or something like that. So um, be open to have some of this come in at odd, odd hours. Um, and odd times and then jot that down and bring that back in. It's not, all this thought isn't combined into the hour you get or two hours or whatever to talk about this topic, so. Um, and also, this is a huge thing. Words matter. The things you say matter. How you say it matters. The tone you say matters. If you want to say some, if you want something and you say, I really wanna do this, this is great. And then, or if you say, I really hate doing this, it's, that's fine too, we now understand, but you've said it, it's now heard, it's now mutual, and then we hear that on the management level and go, okay, you've said that, we are going to take that and support you in what you want. So if you're someone that actually doesn't know what's going on or has a tendency to kind of say some things without taking a moment, um, and really figuring out what does this mean if I say this to the world to the, and to my management and to others, what, what will they perceive this as? This is huge. Um, also, who has ever said, how you doing? And you hear, fine. Yeah? So the, it's the delivery of the message matters. So make sure you're sincere, say what you mean, be aware of tone. I'm, I get bossy, not bossy, I get... I'm gonna let you finish talking. I get, she's like, oh yeah, because she can't say, well, she can, absolutely can say this, but no, I'll be direct, um, especially if I'm like, okay, this needs to get fixed, um, but I do genuinely love the people that are around us in our team and the greater team, and sometimes that's hard. It's like, it's like work, being in a family, right? Um, but don't sugarcoat your message, but you can't be, like, mean about it either, you know? It's if you sugarcoat your message, usually people can see through it. Not always, but it's still, like, you're not being sincere in what you're saying. And that, that really goes both ways. Like, as much as possible, try not to do that. And don't be condescending. No, that's horrible. Which, it's, when you're frustrated, can be an easy thing to fall into. And again, we probably have all done this at some point accidentally, or maybe on purpose because you're really mad as much as possible, try not to do that. that Take a moment, count to 10, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you can't always control how things are taken though. You can say Some something with the best intention and somebody hears something different than what you thought you were communicating and it can get out of control kind of quickly, which is yeah. again where like an open communication can be really helpful to try to mitigate that before it turns into a giant mess. And active listening, repeat back, did you say what you just said? Because I heard you just say that, does it mean this? Is it that? And is it that? And so, um, and this is where the active listening comes into play. And also, um, I've had management that just totally check out on me. I don't know if you guys have gone, I mean, it's, it's the, both sides have to be equally engaged and into this, so. But and the big thing is listen to the response you get. If you're communicating something and you think you're saying it, you think you're communicating something and the other person gets really pissed off, you might not have communicated what you thought. Unless that was your goal, but usually you don't go around trying to piss off the people you work with, generally. Yeah. Um, so so um, we're gonna jump in, so follow through. We're gonna sneak a little faster. So um, uh, some, this is some of the challenges as you work through yourself and with the company is working through imposter syndrome. This is real, people go through it. Sometimes it's called fear. A lot of times it's called fear, uh, or uh, more aptly described here, but uh, as we go through this, really please trust that whoever hired you, hired you for a reason. 
They trusted you enough to invest in you. It takes like three to four months for return of investment for any employee's new hire, even at highest billability. Um, take a moment to step back and try to look at the objective facts, right? Not subjective, objective. Um, and management, um, support your employee and give concrete examples, right? So say, hey, this is where you're positively doing good here. Look at how, look at how you like line up to the rest of the community or to the profession, so. Um, <laughs> okay. And the other thing is uh, related to imposter syndrome sometimes because previous experiences have told you, you suck at that, even if you might not. But working through and with anybody who has baggage, PTSD, whatever you want to call it, other things that have happened in their life that color how they in interact with other people now, the biggest thing is discussing that. I know it sucks. But discussing those conditions and cultures that led you to feel the way you do about your, in this case, your work environment, can be really helpful to see where the culture of where you are now may be different. And it also helps the place people where you are now understand where you're coming from when you have reactions to things that they're like, but what just happened? It, or vice versa. You're like, oh, this isn't the reaction I expected to get in this situation. Yeah, and I like the, the comment of, if, if this takes a lot of practice and, and, and internal kind of growth, but check the baggage at the door as much as you can. Know that where you came from and what are possibly things that will trigger a sense of fear or lack of trust. And hopefully just like, okay, I know that that happens, but this is a new group of people, let's do this. Um, and also be careful with your assumptions on both sides. And management, you really need to trust that people are doing their address best, but you have to address issues very quickly just to make sure it's like, wait a second, it's okay, you can be here, it's safe. It's like that type of thing. Um, Excellent. Okay. <laughs> this is my favorite, no. Repeat yourself, no. Um, try saying it another way. <laughs> Sometimes you have to say it another way. It's not always personal if someone doesn't hear what you're saying. Sometimes a word isn't clicking with them, so you might try a different wording yourself. And the message is more important than the messenger. So sometimes, someone else. Someone <laughs> else can say it, and I say, quote unquote, better. Because who has been in that moment where somebody sitting next to you said exactly the same words you just did, and they, somebody picks it up? Right. Yeah. So um, that totally works. And sometimes uh, the person hearing it is more ready at a different point in time. So it's like, if you're going to jump into how to write a module, and it's your first day with Drupal, some of that message will be lost until you have some time with Drupal, understand the terminology, and then, oh, learning the module um, is like, oh, I get that now. So you're more ready to hear the message, and this also happens on a personal and professional growth level as well. So all of this was a lot of talking for us to then tell you the tools we use to make this and we're going to happen. We're going to we're going to sneak through here because a lot of this is online, and you can, well, our our slide deck is already online, but you can, there's a, this is all online. Um, we were looking at writing our own structure to make sure it was as lightweight but comprehensive and uh, filled with empathy and growth as we could, instead of being those old school things. Um, and we looked and we found a, the Adobe Check-in Toolkit, which is public, and it's all shiny put together. Thanks, Adobe. You really invested that time and money to do that. Um, of course, we use Slack for chat. We use Google Suite to create a private folder for everyone to share the collaborative documentation so we can all get, get in here. And what's interesting is we put our growth plans and tactical activities in our ticket tracking software and assign time to those so we can make sure that people are on track with due dates. We treat it like a project, which is a little bit we treat it like real work so we can get, allow time it with, it is real work. We allow time for self-learning and professional development in the company. Um, so quickly, the Cholby Check-In Toolkit, it's comprehensive and lightweight. It has a cycle, it's frequent, it's open, it's communication, it sets expectation, it has feedback and development, and I'm gonna zip right through. And it, there's lots of pages in the PDF. Don't worry about reading this. Don't worry <laughs> about this, but the takeaway here is they have a guide for the employees and then they have a guide for the management or the leaders or whoever, the, the other person, um, the people managers, what they call them. And they cover the expectations, they cover the feedback, and you can, they have specifics, what you ask, the impact, and what you do out of it. And it was so cool. I was like, oh, cool. We don't need to spend all that time creating this beautiful structure. And it was easy in there so the employees could read it, we could read it, and we're all on the same page. Um, 
and also here's the development plan. And they also had a very basic structure for the questions you ask at like these, um, uh, the, the big growth planning discussion. And this right. might be one of the more useful parts if you are doing this for yourself to go through these questions because it's a nice structure and it, they're all related to what do I want to do when I grow up. It's like, what am I good at? What right. needs development, not weaknesses. Um, but you know, and looking at shorter term goals, longer term, and finding just a structure to kind of parse all of that out. And the questions they ask is what parts of job do you find most satisfying? Where do you? Um, and why? What, There's a lot of why. Yeah, well, most satisfying why? Key skills or strengths that you are doing now, and what do you want to do? Develop and that type of thing. So it's really wonderful because you don't have to work to put some structure together. Um, yeah, if we, we talked a little bit about SMART goals, but it's an acronym for goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So. There's not much else to say on that. Yeah, um, basically don't say that you're gonna build a gravity switch in a day because that's not, it's not realistic. It's not the time, it's sure it's time bound, but it's not really relevant to making Drupal projects. And it's not attainable is the biggest problem. Yeah, yeah, so it's interesting. Uh, the, the feedback guidelines, these are pretty much directly out of there. It's like, provide timely and specific balanced feedback. Don't give your feedback when angry, which might not work super well because you have a scheduled time to talk and you're really pissed. So you might have, that's a, one example where you might want to reschedule a meeting. That said, don't shy away from the hard conversations because they need to happen even if no one really wants to be there. Yeah. Um, and whenever possible, show, not whenever possible, just show genuine appreciation for what you know, is going well and what value people bring to your team. Anytime you can, ask questions for clarity and then actually wait for the responses because maybe the feedback is something you need to improve, but you know, make sure you're improving the right thing, or same, which goes both ways because an employee might have feedback from managers just as much as a manager might have feedback from an well, employee. Well, we encourage that open feedback. And then acknowledge the feedback you were given. It could be a thank you, it could be, I hear you. What, how, acknowledge it in some way so it doesn't seem like you've checked out of the meeting. And on the management and I make sure like, if there are things that weren't met because the business changed or some like scheduling changed, like somebody had to do more project work instead of having their learning time, we just make sure that's really written in there coming from the management as well. It's like, oh no, no, we knew we pulled you off of your growth path for a couple of days because you were working on that, so that's why things moved in. So we want to make sure that's written down. So we, we know when people are being flexible in the mutually agreed upon kind of conversation. So um, the individual development plan, it's used, which is that longer questionnaire. This is not a performance improvement plan. Yes. This that. is not <laughs> the paper you're going to get if you're going to go, which is often most companies use of the you're getting fired paper, but we need to make a, a legal trail. Um, a lot of companies, when they've done PIPs and stuff, well, it's just the lineup for firing, but we've ha heard a lot of different stories. I lead the business summit about people using those performance, impro performance improvement plans, but not firing the people because the people improved, giving them a chance, giving them a couple of chances, so it works. But this one is like, what do you want to do when you grow up? I was just gonna say, there, it's, this is why it's more useful if you're someone who's working independently. Uh, it really can sometimes deepen the connection to what your goals are and how you can assess yourself. A lot of people say they're bad at assessing themselves because they don't practice. Some people it's because they hate doing it. You know, and if you're working alone, or you can take this if you happen to use it at work, fill it out somewhere else. You can do that first or as often as you want to really practice like taking a step back and looking at what you do or don't know and objectively kind of improving your ability to assess yourself, which can help with imposter syndrome as well. And even if you don't have a company that's using this, the tools are nice to ask yourself those questions. Um, so what's next? Um, the key points is agency. You are the driver of your growth, um, and hopefully there's an environment to help lift you up and support you. Um, the motivation driven, so no carrots, although carrots are healthy. Carrots are a nice treat. But yeah. don't, don't have that be the only thing you're going after, especially because I think most people have seen cartoons or other things where the carrot's attached to a thing, you're never actually going to get there. Yeah. Don't want to have that. Yeah, active listening. Thank you for actively listening today. You guys are doing that much better than we are. Yeah. <laughs> um, accountability, but to yourself. This is about you. And then you bring that to the company and the team. And, and, and the company has to be accountable for itself bringing it to the team and your growth. 
Um, yeah, it, cre it improves all those things that we have above this. It really, your growth can create a greater sense of agency, which leads to a sense of confidence and accomplishment. And it usually will promote greater internal motivation because you're like, oh wow, I can do this. I'm going to keep doing this. This feels good. And then lather, rinse, repeat. Yes. Um, and this is a huge thing. Not everything is rainbows and sunshine, but they're coming. You have to invest, you have to have faith. Don't lose hope, uh, you can do this. But you have to know that we are humans and there's a constant evolution of relationships and trust and that are required to have really um, a solid mutual growth yeah. and relationship. And you're human, you might have a great plan, company's on board with it, everything looks great, and it didn't quite work. And so that's where coming back and revisiting go like, okay, what happened here? And readjusting, because maybe your plan wasn't quite right, or maybe you just, you missed something. Yeah, so once again, it's about open communication, but the quality of communication and the empathy um, is there. And it doesn't have to be too complex to make a change. Like that, that PDF is only, you know, like 17 pages of a full, like, and it has all the instructions. But it doesn't take too much time to change. It just takes those first conversations and um, a huge benefits come from it. Um, and make sure you know or ask a lot of good questions. Why does this matter? How are you doing? Where are you going? Um, and um, that we put links, the, the slide deck is already attached to the session. Um, does anybody have any questions, thoughts? Does everyone know what they want to do when they grow up now? Or at least how to talk to someone else about it? Or yourself? <laughs> Hopefully a little bit. Yeah. Uh, question. Question. Hi. Uh, thanks for everything you're do, uh, presenting. I think it's very valuable. Um, we use a product called Know Your Company that you've probably heard of. Mm -hmm. um, and we find that it's hard to get people continually engaged with it. And so, you know, we do regular monthly one-on-one -on -one check ins and we we do a check-in, but mm -hmm. we don't use that toolkit, but I think I'm going to start using it. Cool. Um, how, do you, how do you feel about Know Your Company? Um, and I, maybe describe it for some people who don't know what it is. Um, uh, I'm going to give you my blanket answer for most of those tools. You need to be human. Um, the tool that somebody else was using, it was um, Michael from Amazie. It's Open Vibe. Is that what is? Uh, what do you guys use? No, no, not Bamboo. It's, it's the little thing in the Slack oh, plugin. Vibe. It's, huh? Vibe. Vibe, yeah. So it's this little thing in the Slack that asks one specific question a day and you can target questions per each group because that is going to let them go think. And then you can get the data over time about how the company is feeling. But um, I often feel that tools are been, have been great, but nobody likes to deal with a tool. So it has to be coupled with like personal communication. Like this stuff works, that give somebody a tool and have a good day is not. Great. And to keep the engagement going, I know some people on our team have started like a five minute like touch base weekly to just be like, in that, you don't have to go over your expectation plan or anything else. It's just like, hey, what's up? You good? Things kind of on path. And if not, you can schedule something more and come back to this, but just like. We, we yeah. do random coffee breaks in Slack where someone will start a Zoom and yeah. random yeah. people will join. That helps. Yeah, that, that's all. Yeah, that but these like, are very specific ones. And in Slack, we have management specific channels where. Um, uh, the employee can discuss openly, like anything with their direct manager and HR always involved. Um, well, no, it's so they no, can not say, scary way, no, it's like, oh, you know, I have to take the dog to the, to the vet and it's like an emergency. Okay, then we just all know we're informed. So it's, it's making sure that is available. Um, but no, we, 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 you have to make deliberate time for these. There's like social time and stuff, but it's deliberate time and, and the PMs, I'm, and some of the other folks, I have some people meet once a week. I have some people meeting once every two weeks. Um, it just depends what we're, what their growth is and how um, tied to what the company is doing to make sure that we can go quickly. My other thought on the engagement as it starts to drop is you might need smaller goals. So there's a more uh, frequent sense of like, I'm doing something. There's progress we made. And yeah. we kind of glossed over the slide of follow through. It can happen on either side, but if management starts to drop the ball, you employees can see quickly. start to go, I'm not going to bother because they're not bothering. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. the smaller goals help. Usually. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Any questions?
Any other thoughts? Um, what, okay, Stephanie, what do you want to do when you grow up? That's okay. Use these tools and you'll yeah, figure out. Yeah, exactly. Actually, what I do want to say is um, I want to bring up one person on our team. He, part of his homework was to prepare his answers to the questions and, and he was doing lots of other things, lots of other project work, and we got to the meeting, and he goes, I just want to say I'm really bad at this stuff. I don't know really how to do this for myself. Um, and, you know, can, can you help us? And what we did is we asked him in an interview type of question, not an interview, but a discussion, <laughs> uh, these questions, and we help explore that with him. He needed someone to just self-explore as well. So even if you have a friend or a peer that you can ask that conversation that will provide you that time, that's really important. And did we judge them? No. But it, but it was actually really positive, and it was a good conversation. Did I, I did not judge him. No, no, I want to say something. <laughs> oh, I wasn't looking at you, I so I was looking at it's the, so yeah. Sorry, I normally do a lot of talks on my own, so there you No, go. it's only semi-related. She said something, and I wanted to say something, and then I, wait. Um, oh, God. Oh, you were talking about asking a friend or whatever that. If you have someone who's close to you and has some idea of kind of where you want to go when you grow up a little bit, it can be really helpful. Ask them to write either a bio about you or answer the questions for you. Even if they're wrong, it's a great conversation, and it can be really, really helpful, because either they'll see something in you that you're like, oh, really? Or it'll just promote some conversation. We're like, oh, no, I don't think that's true. Here's why. And it can help narrow things down. Yeah. And um, make sure, I don't know, you guys probably have planned to come to tomorrow for a sprint day. So come and contribute. And also, um, please rate us on the, the session deck. And these, the slide deck is already on there. So you can get all the links and stuff. So cool. thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs>